What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Talking Schmidt, the podcast that tries to deliver a new guest every Tuesday for you. And I'm the host, Schmitty. If you're here to listen to me and Ben Rayborn reconnect after a few years of being off radar, then you are in the right place. Before we jump into it, though, I want to give some major shout outs to some dear friends of the show doing big, big things. First of all, big congratulations to Nicole House for going pro for real and getting surprised up at the Skate Like a Girl Wheels of Fortune 11 event in Seattle, Washington. I got her deck right here. Thank you, Frank Gerwer. Not only did she get surprised up there and turn pro, but she went straight to work, kids. That's what a pro does. Next thing you know, she's in Montreal at the Dime Contest grinding the fucking rainbow rail like a true champion. Shout out, Nicole. You know we got love for you. Shout out. Also this week, I got the new Thrasher in the mail with my Scorpio brethren, Mr. Ronnie James Dio Sandoval on the front. Sick photo at his Channel Street stomping ground in San Pedro. Back nose blunt over the door. That's some serious biz for old Rombo. Shout out, Ronnie. Shout out. Can't wait to high five your ass for this one. Sick photo, Mueller. And lastly, the wait is finally over. The Liz Shout dropped out. her onward part over at Vans, and this thing is full of her ripping with a large amount of the clips in follow fashion from Blood Wizard Pro and follow film extraordinaire, Mr. Christopher Gregson. This video showed the miles, lots of rad spots with Lizzie's incredible style and bag of tricks. Hype for you, Lizzie. Shout out to a huge year with a shoe release, a video part, and I believe a new house. You and Axel continue to kill the game. Big love. Also, this Thursday, September 29th, we will be having a special, special, special edition podcast. Basically, we're going to come out with next week's on Thursday of this week because it is with our friend of Phil's Coffee, the son of Phil himself. The NorCal legend. And it's National Coffee Day, kids. <laughs> You know, we love our coffee here at the show. And speaking of that, you can go to TalkingSchmidt.com and order me up a medium greater alarm from Phil's just the way I drink it every morning to help keep me revved up. There's also shirts, hoodies, beanies, and some kick-ass soft goods. So go check that out at TalkingSchmidt.com. Always a great way to help support the show. Lastly, the easiest way to support is spread the word. Hit the subscribe, leave some comments, leave a five-star review over at the Apple iTunes podcast store under our show, Talking Schmidt. Somehow this helps us grow up them charts and stay among your favorite search options. Okay, 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 enough of that. It's time for the tickety tack and then hear from our friend Ben, who is now pro for the new company, Metal Skateboards, alongside last year's potty award winner mr fred gall shout and out lou who have been cranking out sick graphics boards everything they got a website at metalskateboards.com go over and check that out i am excited i hope you are too nothing but love for ben rayborn and what a coincidence that we are going from talking to benny to handing it over to jay benny Head on over to your local shop and ask for Blood Wizard. If they're out, then you can tickety-tack on down to bloodwizard.com where you have all of your conjuring needs. Tickety-tack! Hey, it's Corey at Blue Plate, 3218 Mission Street. Come see us. Meatloaf, fried chicken, deviled eggs, Dollar Olympia beers. We're here every day of the week. We got a garden and we got smiles on our faces. Come let us make you happy. Hello, hello, can you hear me? There it is. There's audio connection. Haven't seen your face in a while. I know. I think it's been a long time. 
Hello, this is Benjamin Edward Rayborn, and you're watching Talking Schmidt. Holy cannoli. It's cool, like tonight is the night. <laughs> yeah. Oh, big dog's in. Do we really want to be here? Oh, everything's changed. We on? Schmitty? Talking Schmidt. Talking Schmidt, dude. <laughs> you're going to come out different. <laughs> Shit my pants, man. Your Rolodex is fucking deep. Holy shit. It's about the ones. The ones. The ones. Who is this guy? He thinks he's tough shit. What's up? Come on, Smitty. What the fuck? Tell the skateboard police to come get me. What is happening? I'm here for Greg Smith. Yeah! Gregory! <laughs> you, you guys, I don't know if internet can comprehend how hyped I am right now because... My next guest is a good friend of mine, and I haven't talked to him in quite some time. So today's podcast is probably going to sound more like a conversation than anything else because I'm just excited to talk to this guy. This is Ben Rayborn out in, where are we, Jersey? In New Jersey right now. All right. Uh, what? How's Ben Rayborn take his coffee? Drink the coffee. It'll make you feel better. With uh, CBD, sugar, and a bit of almond milk. That's the shit that we live for. How much coffee do you consume a day? Um, actually, not that much. Probably like, I'll have like one or two in the morning and then like kind of like three during a skate day. But I, I work full time now too. So like we ain't got too many coffee breaks. What I know. <laughs> But is it essential that first cup? Like, are you a different dude if you don't have coffee? Oh, I'm, I'm not someone you want to hang out with. <laughs> yeah, same. That's how I, I my, me and my wife have this joke that's not that much of a joke. That's like, I'm not talking to you till after your first cup of coffee. <laughs> that's a great relationship. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty, uh, it's important. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, and then I'm like, okay. <laughs> How you been, dude? Great. Just been working and skating when I can. Like, luckily, my boss is pretty cool about me taking, like, either a long weekend to go out somewhere and film, like, mm. Tuesday or something. But uh, a couple times, you know, I've taken a couple weeks off. He was fine with it, so... He's kind of stoked that I skate because uh, he's also my older brother. Oh. So, uh, dude, I've just been trying to do, you know, as much stuff for metal and like, and just as much skateboarding as possible. And like, from my perspective, like the stoke has come back, right? Like you were a little off it for a minute and now you look like you were just getting sponsored for the first time and, and feeling it all again. Like your vibes are amazing. What it feels like, cause, yeah, dude. I wasn't just a little off it. I was, I don't, I don't even know. Uh -huh. I think that like moving back to Texas and like starting to actually, you know, work full time. Like skateboarding is so precious now. I, I was taking it for granted maybe because like, you know, I had to do it, but I. I don't know how to word it. It's like, yeah, skating's like a new thing. Like I felt like all this stuff that's happening. I feel like that teenager, like you said, that just got his first sponsor and like, oh, I gotta prove myself. <laughs> uh, well, when things are fun again, like you're filming and it's not like, oh, I have to. It's like I want to. Like it's just like everything else. You just if you don't want to do it, then you shouldn't be doing it. You need to want to do it. You just influence somebody. So were you born, where were you born? You were born somewhere in Texas, right? I was born in, you know, like in Houston, but mm -hmm. before I even went to first grade, we moved to a, a town kind of close to like the Sugarland area called Rosenberg. Okay. Small town. And that's where I lived until I moved out to like Oceanside with Dave Smith. Okay, but you found skateboarding in Texas, right? Before you moved to Oceanside? Um, I have an older brother. He's seven years older. Oh. Maybe, I, I don't know exactly how it started. Seven years is a big difference. So, like, by the time I was, uh, what, 13, he was off. So maybe I found his old board or something. When I was, I, I actually rollerbladed first. Oh shit! Whoa, slow it down. Okay, rollerblading wasn't even a thing when I started skateboarding, so I didn't have that like decision to make. 
like they skate with their knees out like like crabs the roller skaters the old like the early 80s parks yeah that's becoming a big thing again dude i see roller skaters at like every park i go oh that's too bad i guess you know what to be honest i i i might get some hate mail but i think roller blades are better than scooters I don't even answer questions like that. Like anything that's attached to you, it's less dangerous for me. Like if I see a rollerblader, I'm not scared. If I see a bike or a scooter, I'm like, fuck, this guy could just wing it. I, so I respect all forms of, you know, old fun, but it is kind of funny seeing like this Hesh 20 year old on a scooter <laughs> whipping it around. Yeah. Ridiculous. I do like all the cute girls in, in uh, short shorts riding the old school roller skates, though. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. We used to go to the roller derby. Um, some girls locally were on a team, the roller derby, and it was like seeing them get tough but also cute. You're just like, this is epic. Who were some of the dudes that we'd see on your wall? Young young Ben's uh, room, like who were your early, like these are my influences. I Fuck, this dude rips or whatever. So Dwayne Peters was one of the big ones. Dwayne Peters here. The lo and behold, I used to be great and famous. During like the, like, I don't know, like the years that kind of like forms a skateboarder, you know, when you're super into it and you kind of find your your style, right? Mm. I think that's about the time when that, uh, when the Dwayne documentary came out, the Who Cares that uh, Lucero did. Yeah. And, um, that was a big thing. Uh, also, that Dogtown documentary was a big thing. So I had that photo of uh, Jay Adams kind of bombing down like this on my wall. Ah, oh, sick. Mike Smith's rolling, you know, just straight acid drop off the uh, hip at the combi. Yeah. Um, a lot of stuff like that. But newer skaters, it was like, like Tony Trujillo, obviously. It was a big influence for me because he was just fucking sick. Kind of like the all-terrain dudes, right? Dudes that could just haul ass and like, I'd rather see someone haul ass in 50-50 something than like, you know, get all mechanical about it. Uh, yeah. Did you ever meet Jay Adams? Um, I did, actually. I saw him randomly at the, um, I think it was right when that uh, Santa Monica Park was built. Mm. that and um you know i had to shake his hand and i'm sure he's just been told it a million times but it meant a lot to me to just say like dude you were a huge influence like thank you Fuck you know yeah yeah those are the moments right like when you meet the dudes that you looked up to and then all of a sudden somehow you're kind of like in the same like it's we're supposed to be hanging out now and you're just like Damn, my dreams gave true somehow. Oh, like dorky and nerdy, dude. I feel like I make like certain people that I be really uncomfortable. I ask a little too many questions or say something that like like is kind of like a would be a trivia question about their skating or something, but I'm like I can't help but spit it out like, "Oh, remember when you you did this here or what?" Yeah, it's like that Saturday Night Live skit where they're like, remember the, the guy meets the Beatles? He's like, remember when you you did that song? And he's like, yes. <laughs> the enthusiasm of our fellow enthusiasts. Was 1031 your first sponsor? Like outside of skate shops? Todd Falcon. Todd Falcon. Sponsored me and uh, a couple of my friends. He gave us these seven, five boards already gripped, you know, with this crazy like clown face. Uh huh. A few of those dudes still skate that were on the team with me, but that was very short lived. He, you know, I'm not going to go into anything. <laughs> Wait, what was it? What was the what was this thing? I don't know. He'd give he, he'd like it go was to his the, own little company. Yeah, it just he printed like a shit ton of boards with his face on it, and like <laughs> okay. It looked like they ripped and had shitty boards, I guess. Uh, all right. Yeah, 1031 was like the first real sponsor. I also skated for Gravity Longboards a little bit, like before 1031 and even kind of during the beginning. Mm. Contest, do you remember that one in um, 
in Phoenix, the Desert Dog Bull Bash. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. That, and I had to ride a 1031 board half the time and, a, and like, a gravity longboard half the time. No way. Already, I've just admitted that I started rollerblading then <laughs> and rode longboard. So, let's keep going. Yeah, <laughs> dude. That, this is epic. 1031, how do you run it? What is VTAC, Chad Knight? Who's who? How do you get discovered by those guys? Or do you send them a sponsor me or what? I think that my dad won like one day. So he kind of surprised me and he was like, hey, we're, I'm going to take you to Southern California to skate all the parks. We're going to go for like, you know, I was out. Of, I was just out of school, like a little kid for the summer break. And um, I, I can't really remember how it went down. My dad probably knows 100 percent, but somehow I just saw Svitek, you know. And um, and just skated around him and he hit me up. And this was when 1031 boards were just like blank deck spray painted. Uh huh. Right after that, you know, the kind of team came together and we did that bleed for me video. And uh, he flew me back out again. And that's when I started like skating Dave Birkenfold's ramp. And like, oh. and uh, Christian kind of took me to my first like contest, like. You know how history just like kind of gets fuzzy sometimes. Yeah, was were you on there before or after CJ? Before, yeah, way before. Way like before. I said, yeah. And then when CJ came on, do, do you remember like that dude ripped too? Like there was some amazing dudes on that team. Like I trip out on like those early days because I was friends with you guys at that time, and then I saw where everybody went after that, and. uh I've talked to Christian a little bit about it too and whatever, but like, do you remember seeing CJ for the first time and being like, holy shit, this guy's on another level? I remember thinking like, why the fuck is this dude in the van with us? Like he needs to van with like those big fucking dudes, you know, like it's insane how natural it seemed to be. Mm. We, uh, we spent a, a little time together on Cayman Island in that era. Holy crap, I remember that. Yeah, it was so good. Oh, so how did that come to be? I can't remember. I'm not sure. I think um we okay, so there was a skate park there and the guy that ran it, he invited me and I think it was like uh Trahobo and Cranny and maybe Hugh I forget who it might have been like something where they paid for us to come out there and and because they had a skate camp. And then I think Christian was offered the same thing through 1031 and he brought the whole team out. That's how it happened. Yeah. And then I think Chad Knight got kicked out because he was like not supposed to be drinking and he had a little drink and then he went crazy or something. That's hilarious. <laughs> what year was that? That Black Pearl Park's insane. Oh, I know. It's so sick. But I think I haven't heard about it recently, but I'm I'm guessing it's fucked because when I went there later, it was already cracked and kind of getting weird. So I don't know if they built it properly or if just because it's on an island, it was. But there, it started like getting some gnarly shit going in there. But that's so fun. When it was new, there was the water. They were below the water table in one of the bowls and it was just coming through all the seams. Right. You left 1031 for Birdhouse. That must have been... Nope. Slave skateboards. Oh, that's right. Slave. Oh, my gosh. Slave for a while and, and then to Birdhouse. Okay, so you left 1031 for Slave. Hung out with Decola, Frex, and that crew, yeah? No, I, I, I was on iPath with Decola and Goman. So it was just kind of like... I don't know. It made sense. And I was really hyped on their vibe. Like the, uh, I don't know, like zine look like anarchist punk look. Mm -hmm. That first video that they put out, their radio television was amazing. Pat Burke's one of my faves. That dude. Oh man. He <laughs> was on trips. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. That's a really good crew, actually. Some of those dudes are still my close friends. I talk to Nicole all the time. He's like the homie. I love you all. Oh. I talked to actually Pat recently. I hadn't talked to him in a while. He seems like he's doing better, too. Everybody's kind of figuring out what they can and can't do with their life and <laughs> molding into a different dude. 
ignorant to those facts sometimes, though. What was the deal with the birdhouse? That must have been insane. Like Tony Hawk, obviously, is just like Tony Hawk. Some of those trips were like the best times ever. Uh, it, you know, you know, like when we went to Europe, you know, he, he, he they were all good at finding you know, little sponsors, like one trip, Mini Cooper sponsored it. And we had a bunch of little, instead of like a big team band, just a bunch of little Mini Coopers. Sick. Always fun because it felt like a real skate trip. It wasn't very plush. And, you know, sometimes it was, you know, just for a celebration purpose, maybe. Uh huh. Usually, dude, it was just, you wake up in a, in a motel room that you're sharing with your teammate and you go out and skate, it was pretty, you know, to the point. Mm -hmm. During that time, I saw some of the gnarliest skateboarding I've ever seen. (laughs) Right. Those twos are fucking what, uh, who would be your dude that you would room with mostly on trips? Um, it would usually be Mike Davis. Oh, been a lot of time together. We were both from Portland. Right. Um, Oh, I wouldn't obviously from Portland, but I was living there at the time. Yeah. Yeah, it would be him. Uh, I loved like, you know, I love trying to be in the room with like, like Jaws and Clive and them. But it, it sometimes we, you know, we'd have enough rooms, but we would just all hang out in one anyway. Uh huh. Yeah. That team seemed like it. I mean, from the King of the Road experiences, it seemed like everybody, w- it was such a tight knit fam- family affair with the skaters and everything. Lizzie coming in and taking her in just as a homie. And like, it was cool to see all that stuff. Uh, she wasn't just taken in as a homie. I mean, she, she fucking rips. So yeah. Like we were kind of curious. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to say we, cause I probably wasn't thinking much of anything, but, but it, it is kind of curious to like, when you get, a vert skater that's a girl you're like how is she gonna vibe in the van when we're all being crazy and shotgunning beers at each other that she looked like she was having a great time she never had any problems with us and and it was cool because like she has like a different aspect on on vert skating which i like like a little bit different than a lot of the girls and and i always tried to like learn some of her tricks and like uh I want to skate vert more, man. That does she still have that vert ramp? Yeah, yeah. Come out and skate vert, dude. So I bought like uh, a couple sets of rectors, like brand new ones. You know, I got the blue and the red. Uh huh. Dude, I want to find like when I skated Mike Crumb's ramp up in Dallas not too long ago with Gregson. Uh huh. That was like, oh man, I need to find a vert ramp. There's one in Houston, but it's like 13 feet tall, and you know, mm-hmm. I'm more like 11 with you know whatever eight inches of vert (laughs) yeah houston's got well how far are you from houston um not far at all like that vert ramp's probably like 30 minutes from me i just Uh got in contact with the dude the hvr you've seen like the like the banger and the hanger stuff yeah that ramp so i'm gonna when i get home uh you know i might skate it this weekend just to try and get vert legs back are you pretty much stationed in texas you think for a while or are you there for good or is this temporary or what what are you thinking no one knows no i dude i got a job i got a good thing going and um i i i don't see a reason to change anything right now right if it's not broke don't fix it and it's it's actually going well like i said dude um skateboarding so much better for me right now so it's like yeah i like i got a really good thing going and uh i think texas is where i want to be for you know i don't know maybe forever but who cares we'll (laughs) see yeah one of my favorite uh rayborn moments was at the uh old vans park series where they said no 540s and uh you spun one (laughs) Oh, and I flipped them off. I loved that. That was so sick. What was the deal? They they basically said they didn't want a 540s because they didn't want like Tom Shard to win or something. Dude, you're going to hinder skateboarding? Yeah, that was weird. 
it's just stupid. Did you think when you heard that rule, like you were going to do this or was it kind of more of a spontaneous thing? No, right. Yeah. Right. When I heard it and they said it over the mic, I just thought like in an instant, I was like, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I learned it padless. Like it, it's not just a vert trick, dude. Tom Penny, Indy five. It's real. It exists. I, I heard that. And just in my mind, I just got mad. So I just, I was just going to flick one as a joke, but I ended up landing it and I started myself <laughs> and just went like that. <laughs> That was amazing. What about um video parts that you've done? Which one in in the video parts that you've made are you kind of most proud of that you look back and say that that's the one that I would want to put if someone asked me to see a video part of me and never saw a part, which one would you pull out? A good question. I was talking to someone brought this up the other day and they're like they always liked my slave part and stuff. Yeah. One that I really pushed for, or the two, were like the Bones video, the Newgrounds part. Because Jared. You know, at Burnside, I was so hyped on. Mm. And um, the other ones, which was going to be an iPath video, but it ended up just being kind of a, you'd call it a homie video, but it was just everyone on iPath. But <laughs> we did it ourselves because, you know, and uh, that was by Thad Krosky. And that part and the bones part, like, I feel like that was at the level where I was like, I wasn't scared to die yet. So <laughs> I was like kind of pushing myself, like skating, like handrails and stuff that I did. I probably couldn't even get onto a handrail now, but <laughs> I was really proud of, of the, uh, the difference in skateboarding, you know, like, Anybody can go do like film a part and go do the same tricks at a different spot that they normally do. Right. Yeah. Go film like a, a few body jars, a back three sixties, some invert tricks in a different pool than I did in another one. But that part, it was like going to Thailand and like skating street and like, and skating like handrails with Rhino. Sick. Rhino. Yeah. That's like kind of a little bit like, out of your element or just like new stuff. Yeah, I, I get that. Like, okay, I got a body jar. Where can I do it? I've already done it here, so I'll do it here. But it's still a body jar that you know you can do. I was still young enough to where I, I didn't have that. Like, now I have like this little bit of a scared, like, wussy kind of mindset. Like, well, I, you know, I'm not used to this trick, so I might eat shit. So I don't want to try it. But at that point, I was like, just had no clue how to like, like Smith grind, you know, an outledge, but I would just haul ass and just stick and die and then get back, <laughs> you know? So I, I was proud that I like, I had a little, little bit of time where I like just Matt Bergered it, like just went for <laughs> Brought out my most inner Matt Berger. Talk about the, uh, the cover, the Thrasher cover Burnside. That's fucking, that's forever. Yeah. So, I mean, I, dude, there are a few people trying it. Uh huh. I just, I was out staying with uh, Donovan Rice. You remember him? Yeah. Another one of my favorites. But it, it, it like, word around town was, is Phelps, you know, rest in peace. He, he basically made a claim. He said, whoever does the, it, remember there was a brontosaurus on the wall at that point? Mm -hmm. All gets the cover. So I, I think at that point, it almost became a race. So I went and did it filming for the Bones video. Um, Garrett Gray shot it. It was shot. It was a great photo, but it just didn't work for the layout of the cover, I guess. Uh huh. I had to, like, you know, after the trip, I had to fly back. And it was way colder then and, like, rainy and just, ah. Uh, and I'm like, dude, so scary. Like, you know, you roll away from that thing and it's not that I have like speed wobbles. It's like pure body, like shaking, vibrating. Like you're just like, Oh fuck. That felt insane. <laughs> Go do it again with Burnett. And like, I mean, I would be so bummed if I didn't land it in the same time frame of the, the act, the new photo. So I had to do it again, basically. And um, 
And then like somebody, I think somebody filmed it or something and put it on Instagram for a hot minute. And Burnett had to like find them and like tell him to take it off. Cause that right? was like a whole debacle too. Like we were like, Oh God, what do we do that twice? And then someone posted it. Now I don't get anything from it. You know, oh. it's just not stingy, but you can't like expect things to happen, you know, but when you like when you do something like scary like that, you're gonna fucking fight for it, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Especially when you put in that effort, like doing it and then coming back with the burn dog and like the whole production of that. That's a little bit stress too. Dude, Burnett being there, like I don't know. I I get so like nervous around people that I I've known of for so long but don't really know. Yeah, no, and then if you're shooting for the mag, just all that adds into this head fuck, and then you're just like, but like you know, you li- you spent some time in Portland, like you said, and you know the importance of Burnside. It's just for me, I can't imagine you. Seems like the perfect fucking story for you. Like if you're gonna have a cover, having it at Burnside seems pretty fucking iconic and rad, as opposed to just like some vert ramp in Nebraska. Hammocky got the shot. <laughs> so hyped, man! Like that cover. Besides it being like my first one, it, it, like it meant a lot that it was at some place like Burnside. And I mean, I can really dork out and sound like a little kid to you because like the first. I skated Burnside a million times before I'd ever went to Portland because of Tony Hawk Pro Skater. I used that bad word. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And that's the one I always wanted to to play on the game because I'd look through Thrashers and see, you know, like the articles with like, you know, like Hewitt and those dudes skating all those big Oregon parks. And I just had never gotten that chance. So like when I turn on the video game after school, I'd all I'd just go to the Burnside level and try and reenact like lines and stuff. Mm -hmm. (laughs) there's mr osage i remember so we went there on a skate rock trip it was the first skate rock trip where we went from reno or uh, vegas to seattle and we stopped at burnside we met chaz panetta in redding and jake started firing him up on the wall at that time he did like that other part full coping the u-pipe yeah top yeah texas boys that grew up at Southside skate park both were the ones that went vice versa off the top. Provoking the stoke. Oh, that's pretty cool. I never put that together. Funny, right? Yeah. What happened to Chaz? Is he still around? Is this as the, like a public service announcement? Check one, check one, check two. Public service announcement. Someone please find Chaz. I know he's out there. <laughs> I'm going to make a, like a, start wheat pasting posters Next time I'm in Portland, like a have you seen him, but with Chaz's face. Dude, animal Chaz. Yapple dapple. (laughs) (laughs) Have you seen him would be amazing. Milk cartons. (laughs) Oh, that's our guy. Yeah. You got to push with your arm. He'll sound like he's from Jersey when he's like, you got to push with your arm. I don't know. Good old Aaron, comb your hair. (laughs) Yeah. Nightmare was the best. Oh, dude, I copied that a million times. What's the one you do where you like fall asleep type thing and then like? Oh, I call it a sleeper. Like, so that's, it, you know, like you're in like a sweeper like thing and then you just like lay on the deck. <laughs> yeah. And I I just thought that was funny because I skated that, um the Halloween bull bash and like the clip of me doing it, my Halloween costume, I was in like a little kid's onesie with the teddy bear, like, you know, like my pajamas. Right. At the diamond thing, that that was fun. Cool, man. Yeah, those those were super fun. Um, talk about the King of the Road. You guys fucking turned into zero and won a bunch of King of the Roads. And uh, I got to drive up to fucking Sacramento and see you do the loop. Oh yeah, well, kind of. I put the uh, Baker okay. Maker at it. It doesn't count. I don't. I mean, dude. In King of the Road accounts. Okay. Other than... You what, know what I mean? What was the fucking... Um, did you ever do the real one that Tony had to hit? Like the wooden one? The one that Tony has, I heard you like, you have to just stand straight and like at, never pump. Like the one I did, you know, like it's more like the how they make those new portals at little parks. 
yeah. like in Hawaii. It, it's more like that. Like you, it's like a cartwheel esque feeling. Had you ever done like a funnel, like the Reedsport one or any of those? Oh, hell no. No, I think so. No, that <laughs> was the first completely upside down. I mean, it wasn't that big. It was a- the one in sack. Yeah. Sacramento was like seven feet. <laughs> yeah, it was small. I swear to God, like I, I could jump and grab onto it. Yeah, it was so small. Uh, that's why all those portal things are only about six feet tall. Like mm. for some reason, that tight transition and the way you do it, it hugs you to the wall. Similar, you know, that that ride in the fair that just sucks you to the wall as it spins. Yeah. What was the tr- what was the trick? What was like for you? Like, how did it click? The oh, I can do this. Um, I started grabbing backside, like, like you know, like the real backside air where you grab like next to your foot under the wheel. Yeah, kind of going up and grabbing backside and just whipping it like a weird tweaked backside air, and then it and slowly but surely, and then. I had to put my hand on the very vertical and use it to push myself through around the other side. Right. Going up, I'm putting my hand down and then pushing past it. That was the only way I could figure it out. I mean. Oh, sick, dude. I was hyped to be. I was like, I think we were there and you were trying it. And then you guys were kind of running out of steam because it was king of the road. And you're like, I'll, I, I want to get a night's sleep and I'm coming back tomorrow and doing it. And I, I was heading home to SF hour and a half, whatever. And I was like, you can do it tomorrow. And you're like, I'm going to try. And I was like, I'm going to be here. <laughs> so I just came back up and met you guys. It was fucking radical. World's flipped upside down. Uh, nice. What was, what was some of like, I mean, you've, this might be a r- too hard of a question or it might not be, but you've seen a lot of amazing shit. What was some of like, I can't fuck like I know everyone's good, but I cannot believe you did that. Like there's a lot of things like that. Um, I mean, there's certain dudes I can say that like just watched. I mean, like, I don't know. 50 percent of the things that I've witnessed Jaws do. Mm. Um, Were you there when they were skating bobs? Yeah. Yeah. That was that was nuts. He put uh, what's whipped cream on it. <laughs> Pretty much anything Clive does, right? That shit scares the hell out of me. Yeah. Is there times where you're not even wanting to watch? Dude, dude there have been a few things where I couldn't watch. Like the first, I I just did, I don't know. I get I get like queasy and nervous and stuff when I see that. Yeah, like if dude, like like Clive skating. Fuck, there's this one rail. Where it's just like, oops, you don't even know what's going to happen. You know, you like, and he's not one to kind of test it. It's just like straight to like lip slide, <laughs> you know, and you're like, I'm like, Dude, uh, you know, yeah, you're kind of pe- being on those birdhouse trips was a whole different level of skateboarding to watch. Mm-hmm. We got Jerome working for the mag now. He was your TM. He's pretty solid as far as like just doing the miles and making sure everyone's all right. He was, he was great TM. Just a, just a good all around guy. He, he lets me annoy him with text when I'm like, like, yo, how do I do this? (laughs) Yeah. He's the best. He's, he's been doing a lot for the mag. It's cool to see him just step in and kind of keep it going. So what, what goes down? What happens with, did you quit birdhouse or did you just kind of like what happened? I, I You disappeared for a little bit. I burnt out. Like I it, dude, Portland drugs, drinking, just not skating. Uh, so Portland winners are tough. I can sit here and blame Portland as much as I want, but that's uh, super. <laughs> I just got caught up into the party scene. I didn't care about really anything. Uh, and uh, uh, my best friend, Jake, just flew to Portland one day on his own dime from Texas and just like, just kicked my ass. 
And next thing I knew, I was on a flight home <laughs> to Texas. No way. And, uh, yeah, yeah. So, like, I just, you know, I didn't know what to do. So, I just started working, and I'd slowly start to skate. And then when my boards ran out, I, I got a little package from Birdhouse. But I just, you know, I never saw anyone caring about, like, I, I didn't think I'd ever, like, try and film something or, like, go on a trip again. I just wanted to skate after work. So that started happening. And, uh, like, you know, I started getting clips and stuff. And and out of nowhere, like, I, I get this text from, from Fred Gall. And it's just like, dude, call me when you get a chance. Trust me, it'll be worth it. So I, like, call him. And he just gives me the whole lowdown on what like Lou and him and Donnie are doing with metal. And like, to be honest, I kind of just, in my mind, I was like, ah, eh, Birdhouse didn't want me or care. So I kind of blew it. I wasn't the nicest about that. I should have probably like, I did tell the TM and I was like, what do you think? And he's like, dude, go for it. But I didn't tell Tony and uh, oh. I don't know. God, I've, he's probably got a million things to worry about in life, but but uh, I'm they understand now that dude, that was like the best de- decision I could have made because it's just the whole vibe and like the working class and just you know like it's it's not all about trying to be number one. It's just it's just showing like the fun in skateboarding and how you can keep doing it even when you're old and burnt out. That's awesome. I love that. Freddie's the best. And uh, man, it's he's inspiration too. like to see like he what he's gone through with his party days to where he's doing it now. And just to see like to have that little you knew him through iPath, right? Is that how you guys kind of started? Man, I had my uncle Fred, my uncle Lou. And now another first impression from Fred Gall. All right, so I believe the first time I ever seen Ben Rayborn was when Ohio Dave became the TM of, of iPass, and he had us all fly to Ohio to shoot like a catalog at his brother's house or something, like in the barn where we had to build ramps and all this weird shit. And Ben Rayborn is the first time I seen him, and I was like, who is this little shit kid, dude, with these glasses? He's fucking, he's all like 1031'd out and shit, and, and like, then we get to the skate park and he just fucking tranny any dude just destroys everything and i'm like holy shit like that's why he's here dude <laughs> fucking ripper man like and like he, dude we used to call him and jaws the air babies because we'd get to a demo and like i actually yelled at him once because i kind of felt bad because me and kenny reed and jackson back we're like the old guys trying to f- and these dudes are air babying it up for the crowd. And I'm like, yo, guys, chill the fuck out. Like, you know? <laughs> but that shit would be funny, man. But yeah, dude, Rayborn's awesome, man. He was just out here for that contest. And then he stayed in Jersey and I brought him to some spots and shit. What, when you went back from Portland, did you have to go through like a rehab or anything like that? Or did you just hang around the right people? Or how did you go get like your shit together? Uh, deleting every contact uh, contact I had and uh, moving in with my parents for a while. Oh, okay. Just, you know, taking any party situation out of the equation. Mm. No way to do it. You know, I didn't have a car when I got out there. Uh, just tried to, you know, like basically I slept for like two weeks. <laughs> was there some dark days? Was you guys dealing with some depression and shit or it was all right? all right because i hadn't seen my family and my true friends you know my old friends from school yeah and i i didn't really get depressed and then my brother giving me a job at his the company he was working with and now i work with the company he owns like that just helped just being outside sweating your ass off all day right yeah what what kind of things do you do to help yourself get through like anxiety and stuff? If you're feeling anxious and stuff, is there some coping mechanism you have that helps you? Uh, vices. Um, 
I, I still smoke pot. I still drink a little bit, not as much, but any, any drinking that's every day is still too much Uh huh. for anxiety, man. I don't know, dude, I have a hard, I have a really, really, really hard time doing like skate events. Uh huh. Where it's just a lot of people staring. I don't know. I just, I've always been kind of nervous around people, but like, you know, I feel like it, 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 it's gotten a little bit more hectic, you know, cause I, people like want to ask me like questions and stuff. And, and then I have a hard time with that. So I try and go hang out like at FDR, like I'm going to go hang out with the, the indie dudes. And then I'm like the same person that I was getting away from asking them all the questions. Then I feel awkward. Like, uh, dude, just being by myself in the, uh, like, I kind of just go like on a trip or at an event. Like I just take every, uh, you know, like 10, 15 minutes, every little bit to just like go by myself somewhere and collect myself. That's just, good. Like, Breathing helps a lot for me. I People uh, always have said it and it always seems so like obvious, but like if you focus on it and just like take time out to just in through your nose, out through your mouth or whatever, and just like you're focusing on something like that that takes the focus off away from whatever you're freaking out about sometimes. Yeah, that totally makes sense. <laughs> what was that FDR thing like though? Talk about that. Let's get the update on this. This is the rip ride rally FDR. Uh, what was that one week ago? Probably. Dude. Um, it was hell on earth. <laughs> it was amazing, dude. It was one of the coolest things I've ever witnessed in my life. Uh -huh. Just, they got a bunch of new cement. I mean, I heard some crazy stuff about being like upwards towards like 10 or 20 grand over budget on cement or something like that. The shit they built, dude. I mean, they built Danny Way's mega ramp rolling from the DC video into a pillar wall. <laughs> yeah, that looked insane. They keep showing people slamming. Did you know, you know that someone backside scratched it, right? Backside grinded it. Just, you know, kind of sliding up in their oh, truck. Yeah at the first event from the contest, the mini ramp event, that's the same kid that Fred hit. So they ran into each other and the kids. Oh yeah. And then he did broken neck, broken neck, posted a photo of the, of him in a, uh, hospital. I saw that he was in the hospital. Young men to do, to like win the last contest after doing that in the first one or, you know, last event. Holy shit. And there was a ton of people there, right? Yeah, there were so many people. Luckily, when the spits played, like I, I had gotten up on stage and I was just behind the band. Ah, uh. we go like flash on the audience, and you could see the true extent of like everybody there, dude. It was it was very much surreal. Like it was insane. Well, what are you guys working with with the uh, metal? Are you you guys? You said you're filming some clips. Are you guys trying to put together a little video? We're, you know, we like trying to have like constant content and so we got a little, you know, a lot of stuff for like, uh, kind of like Instagram edits and stuff. But, uh, me and Richie Blackshaw, he is, uh, he's just a straight ripper that lives out here. I've known him forever, uh, more than 10 years. And basically he's like Fred's little nephew. And, uh, me and him are kind of going to do like a video with, you know, just us and like a team edit in between or something like that. Uh, um, kind of like a pack of lies style. Okay. Everybody's got so many ideas and we're just trying to do what we can, you know, get done and get done right. But dude, it's fun, man. it's really cool. Like to see all this stuff like coming into fruition and like, how hard these guys work to make that happen. Like it's, it's awesome. And there's some rad shit coming out. Yeah. How cool dude! that Fred gall, uh, thrasher collab shit. I was so stoked on that. I had to get a box. I was like, dude, can, please, you guys. Start. <laughs> what are some of your favorite inverts? Did you see that Winkowski did the perfect, uh, what do you call the real layback air? The three motion one? A layback air where you like 
you go like that, that, that. Uh huh. One of those to a front pivot. Oh fuck! He does. I, he does insane shit. Like I just saw it, and I was like, it blew my mind. Wow. A fully mammoth would be cool. What would the fully mammoth be? Well, a woolly mammoth is like a good buddy, and then you stab your nose into the deck. Uh huh. Back in, you know, Neil Blender was buff. I love Mr. Neil Blender, man. Man, he could like, you know, poke his board on the deck, then pull himself back up into a good buddy and go back in. Fully mammoth, in, in my idea, would be a frontside invert spinning frontside, and then you stab your nose onto the deck in front of your wrist, and then pull it back in. Oh, fuck. Uh, on the deck, frontside boneless, like your you, the your boneless foot on the on like a foot from the coping into a complete fall guy. Frontside emerge faking. Oh, I could see Bucky doing that. My shit's taken care of. Yeah, dude, I hope he sees this because I, dude, if someone, I mean, even into a real frontside invert, but, you know, multiple people can kind of boneless frontside invert. Yeah. Stepping on the deck of with your foot like this far from the coping and jumping straight back into a frontside invert <laughs> and then I, fall. I filmed Bucky doing boneless to frontside invert like low to high up an extension. That was pretty much jumping into it. Boneless frontside inverts. Oh, I'm sure there's a bunch of dudes that can. I just can't name everybody off the top of my head, but. Right. <laughs> Frontside invert. I've only done like a few. Uh, what about early '90s shapes? What's what kind of shapes are you looking for when you're doing this? You you like a a fish cut? You like uh what what kind of things? Like, is this it? It's a mix. It's kind of like a bow turner, like 1993. It's a football. It's it's a oh. small. I've always skated smaller boards. So the nose and the tail are similar. The nose and the tail are both actually quite pointy. Uh huh. It's pretty interesting, but the new shape I have coming out. Um, did you ever see Rob Deerdick's uh, Manus Alien Workshop shape? I can't remember it. Kind of more of like the round tail, and then it kind of footballs out to like the nineteen ninety two nose, like not a football nose, more like the, uh, you know, like some of those blind boards and. Uh, I don't like know. It, is it square in the front? A little bit. It's it's just different than this one. Uh, you'll it'll be out soon. But I I just like uh, slimming down those boards. I ride a fourteen inch wheelbase. Uh huh. Taking a shape from you know ninety two, ninety three, maybe even ninety one, and and uh, uh, making it with like a fourteen inch wheelbase and a bit shorter. And then, you know, going around like anywhere from 825 to 8.6 or 7, you know, at the widest point, because I like curvature on the sides. Right. I don't like much. Yeah. That was so awesome about like, dude, Lou over here spends fucking hours trying to get these shapes correct. Dude, Metal Lou, get in the screen for a quick cameo, my friend. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Hell yeah. Is Lou like cutting them himself and shit? He's just putting in all the hours to get it. You know, they we're getting samples, you know, delivered left and right. It's not like doing it to try and be different. It's just like catering the board to, to the skateboarder and letting a kid like or whoever, you know, when they buy the board, they get to see like this is what this dude likes to skate. You know, this is cool. This is what he likes. This is what he likes. And right. It's just fun to actually like work on it on shapes and like, you know, it, at a certain point, you you start getting a little dorky with it, but it makes it more exciting to skate like a different shape than you did last time, you know? So, well, s- skateboarding is about creativity and like we can't just all have this. It's, the thing that I think for me seeing in skateboarding that bums me out is when somebody does something rad 
and everyone else gravitates towards that because they want to make a buck or whatever. Like, oh, Supreme did this. So then everybody's doing what Supreme did. It's like, dude, Supreme already did that. There's called ABDs in skateboarding. Who <laughs> you know, it's like, what's his name? The filmer guy, uh, Bill. He Strobeck. He did the video where he zoomed in on everybody, right? And then every other video after that filmed the same way. And you're like, no, dude, like do your shit. People like creativity. Like we don't want robots out there. You don't want like 500 of the same thing. So it's like, if these guys are doing popsicle decks because they like that, okay, cool. But if they're doing it because that's what sells, then you're like, fuck you, dude. Like, I want my shit how I like it. You just influence somebody. But the same goes with like this shape. Like, yeah, it's like a football shape and I know people make it, but dude, this thing's an 825 at the fattest point of the board. Mm. That board's not meant to copy or sell that's what exactly what i wanted what and you it, ride it's actual creativity it's not it's not a uh, formulated yeah. like you're saying you know totally no i know i mean anybody that watches you skate knows that you have creative flow like your shit is like always like you want to do a little something different well do you got any spoilers? You got anything like that you've been working on that uh, we might see a little new flavor from old Ben? I mean, I'm making a video called "Old Dog, Old Trick." Is that is that real? I can't. I, all I can say is that, it, dude, I'm I'm you know I'm ba I'm just back into it, man. Like that's I, bad. I have like this huge project besides the metal video with me and Richie. But, dude, I just want to fucking skate. And if there's cameras around and photographers around, whatever, that's cool. Like, but, dude, I don't know. I'm just going to be fucking skating. And you guys invite me to as many of your events. And <laughs> I just want to, like, I still want to just be out there in, 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 in the skate scene because I miss it. And now I don't take it, uh, like, for granted anymore. Was there something in your mind that clicked? Like you said, your friend came out and saved you kind of and brought you back and stuff. But was there something that in your downtime you were thinking about or anything that just clicked where you're like, I don't know, where it drew you back in and gave you this feel where you're just stoked again? Dude, I I think it was when, when I had just gotten home and like I went to the skate park and like, there's no one there with a board that I had bought and just, I didn't, you know, I just cruised around and carved and, and something clicked there with, with the, just the mindset of like, Oh, like I don't have to film right now. You know, like I don't have to be doing this. And, and then the weekends after that, it just turned into like, it's like going fishing. It's a mix of like fun and meditation and just to get out and like that viewpoint on it has made me like progress now. Like I'm learning tricks now that I couldn't do, but I'm still trying to relearn tricks that I used to be able to do like fucking first try. It's a weird, it's weird. Wow. Okay. Was, uh, do you think maybe the, the pressure was there a, was it just becoming to be too much pr like more pressure than fun? And, and then you had no pressure and that's kind of what got back to like having fun. It breaks down to you. Yes. Okay. And it, it, more so it, I, it's not like anybody held a gun to my head and told me to do a trick. Uh -huh. I have like a weird feeling where it's like, I don't know, maybe I try too hard to like, like, I'm like, damn, you're giving me, like, a paycheck and you flew me out here. I got to fucking die for it. You know, that kind of thing. Sure. That's that's kind of where the um, um, self-medicating came from, you know. Okay. And then there's also your bar, right? Like, I told Duffy, I was like, dude, you came out of the gates and put your bar way too high. Like, how do you, because you always want to raise your bar, you know? It's like, you get, oh, that was sick. And then it's like, yeah, but now I have to top that. Yeah, and I got past the plateauing and then, you know, all the partying happened and it started going downhill. Uh, like I'm never going to be there again. So what's the point? And mm. then that 
break and 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 working again and like now I just dude I don't have a fucking bar. I don't need one. Right. Really the stoke right there is just like if I want to go fucking skate a curb for two hours without a filmer, that's my choice. Shit, you know, which big ass bowl are we going to go to today and like you know that kind of thing if i want to do that i can but it's just nice to not have a bar anymore Uh uh-huh fuck yeah a whole stoke with like the new company metal like it that whole thing just makes me like i'm just so hyped because they they they're not asking for a bar they're not you know they just want to support skateboarding in general and how and make it fun so that's the easiest thing for me. <laughs> okay. And then what's the deal with BA? You got Brian Anderson, uh, like a guest board or something. They worked all that out. I mean, Brian and, and Fred and Lou and, and all those dudes are friends. So it's just, and plus that graphic dude, it's just too good. Uh, come on. So we're going to look out for more guest boards in, in the near future. Fuck. Yeah. Sick. Well, dude, I'm, I honestly, I'm going to geek out right now, but, um, when that cold call on Thrasher came out and Gregson hit, I think Gregson hit me up. Like he was filming with you and sent me a photo of you or something. And I, it touched my heart, man. I think about you a lot and I knew you were like off radar for a moment. You, you went Chaz Pineda before Chaz Pineda went Chaz Pineda. (laughs) So I just want to say, I I bet there's a million other people just like me out there that are just stoked to see you rolling around. And I've said it to a lot of people in my life, like no one cares about you doing the best thing. They just care about seeing you roll. There's fans of your skateboarding. So if you're rolling down the street, having fun, everyone's stoked, you know? Thanks, man. And uh, and I do. I know what you mean, because I feel the same way about uh, my favorite skateboarders. So I'll, I'll try and keep that in mind. <laughs> always, dude. And always also like just as a friend, know that you have friends and reach out and ask for advice and don't feel like you're being a, a nerdy asking too many questions. People love you and they want to help you when you need it, just like you want to help your friends when they need it, you know? And it's good to hear all this love, you know? Absolutely. And I cannot fucking wait to give you a nux, a hug, and fucking get some grinds together, bro. Soon. Sooner than later, please. Yeah, absolutely. We'll 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 make this happen. Well, fuck yeah, dude. If you had to uh list like eight favorite punk bands of all time without thinking too hard, how do you rattle them off? In no particular order whatsoever. Yeah. Punk bands. Um, we got the damned. And then I'll go f- as far as saying uh like GBH, the Zounds, like Crass, Subhumans, Angry Samoans. Yes. I mean, I could just keep going and going because there's so many different like styles of punk that I like, and I like anything from like pre-punk like the New York dolls all the way to like dystopian, like dystopia, like you know, gnarly, like kind of grindcore esque, but I really like the the late seventies, early eighties era. Okay, what about Bad Brains versus Black Flag? Black Flag, because the songs are now like anthems to me. Uh. If you gave me two CDs and I was about to drive somewhere, I'd probably pick the Bad Brains one because you know they they had some like dub stuff that's nice to listen to, and then like the heavy hitters. But I've been I've been listening to way more Dead Kennedys than I ever used to finding mm-hmm. their funny stuff, you know, some of their lives like like hold on, hold on. Jello's fucking epic. Like how is Dead Kennedys even a band without Jello? It makes no sense. Yeah, he was I I don't know. Yeah. Well, sick, dude. Thanks for taking the time. Safe travels and all that back and like stay in touch. You got my number and uh appreciate you doing this and uh I'll probably be down to buy a Ben Rayborn metal board when I see it on the shelf. We always end with music. What are some of your favorite uh, jams? What would you want to like throw on a jukebox if you could? Oh, and the song is called Gut Feeling, like like a feeling in your stomach, a gut feeling. 
I know wow. this one. Yeah. Are we not men? We are Devo. I mean, come on. That's a classic. The intro to the song is so nice. Good to talk to you, Ben. With all my heart. I can't wait to see you in person again. Uh, yeah, let's skate. Absolutely. Cheers, man. Buddy. Later. Thank you for listening to another episode of Talking Schmidt. You can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Anchor, Spotify, or anywhere you get your podcasts. When you subscribe, you'll get notifications every Tuesday of new episodes the minute they become available. Also, please leave reviews in a five-star rating. It's the best way to help the show grow. All of the episodes will always remain free, but if you would like to help support the show, you can do so at TalkingSchmidt.com, where you can pick up some merchandise like t-shirts, beanies, hats, and stickers. The website has an entire archive of all of the episodes with extra photos and videos. Email us with any suggestions, comments, or ways that the show may have improved your life at talkingschmidt at gmail.com. All interviews are conducted, edited, and produced by Schmitty. The intro music is Mary's Cross by the band Nature. A very special shout out goes to the executive director, Cheryl Camisa. Shout out. Love it! This is Talking Schmidt, where the Rolodex is deep, but the conversation is deeper. Keep the wheels greased.